So um, this started from having a Greetings, bronze player friend. ask how he can climb out of uh, bronze. He just doesn't know how he can get to silver. I asked him to submit a replay, but it was kind of impromptu and maybe he left, I don't know, or maybe he's not currently able to. And uh, so we never did get it, but someone else who is platinum asked for the same thing as a replacement in lieu of uh, the bronze player not being able to submit the replay. Ten seconds. And so here we are, uh, we're watching Knalla, who is Zarya. What we don't know is how the draft came to be, but let's just know that this is a draft of Towers of Doom. And we can already see that the uh, red team, which is not our uh, brave followers, Three, has a no-brainer team. A very tanky punching back uh, warrior, Diablo, who uh, has very easily telegraphed abilities that allow teammates to follow up. Uh, very safe mage in Liming. They have a late game monster in Lunara with poke damage that doesn't necessarily uh, counter Mal's healing. It's the other way around. But still, Lunara can be played fairly safe as well. Varian and Diablo super tanky, and then the standard healer in Rhaegar. And I'm assuming it's gonna get Bloodlust just because. I don't know why everything sounds so loud suddenly in this game. I'll just lower it to kind of be more conducive to the analysis. So right from the get-go, we can say that Chromie is a more uh, difficult hero to contribute greatly with in a game as uh, she relies a lot on poke, but it can be hard for the teammates to follow up. Then uh, we also have Sylvanas, who can only attack the front line, never the back line, except if you're very, very good with the level 13 talent Windrunner. So you can Haunting Wave in the back line, shoot someone like Liming or Lunara, Haunting Wave back again. And all while being very aware of uh, the cooldowns of the teammates. Uh, of the opponents, so that you don't get stunned in the back line. Uh, and then we have Double Warrior, Artanis, who, in my experience in Hero League, generally overextends a lot at the lower levels. And then you have Zarya, who is teammate dependent to get energy. So, a much more difficult to execute composition. Effortlessly, this should go in the way of the red team. Uh, our ally, our uh, viewer, Knalla, who is a grubby sub, he uh, picked Zarya. Nice move. He picked Zarya, which um, I don't know when he picked it. I'm going to assume not first. It's risky to take Zarya first. Uh, Zarya on Tyrants of Doom is a pretty good hero to take. And we're actually going to follow Zarya a little bit more closely. Uh, there we go. Zarya is a pretty good hero to take on Tyrants of Doom as it is easy to cancel objectives. So I do, I do see um, a lot of uh, emphasis on focusing Varian, who is generally unkillable. Uh, especially if you look at your team, you do not have Giant Killer. So right from the get-go, if I was Zarya here, I would say I'll never focus uh, Varian or Diablo with my grenade. Thanks for W3 streaming. Do you think that W4 really someday comes out? I'm not sure. I will write you PM. Can you check it after stream, PLS? I'll try, but after stream, I'm usually pretty busy with like eating and walking the dog and stretching my leg and stuff. Uh, the first thing I want to say is in Hero League, there are many skills that will determine your effectiveness. It's not just micro, it's not just minimap awareness, it's not just doing the objectives or doing dumb things together instead of good things alone. There's so many things. It can only be grouped by a single rule of thumb, which is what is going to be the highest extra value for my team. Whether that means helping your team or whether it means abandoning your team. What is the biggest thing that I can do to contribute? Now let's talk about what's happening here. You can only control yourself, of course, but we've got four people basically taking a freaking picnic in mid lane. Everyone is standing around, even as the red team is freely soaking top lane and not one of them is cho choosing to go there. Now, if we talk about solo laners, the number one solo laner on this team is Artanis. 
He's not doing his responsibility. Okay, fine. The number two solo laner is Zarya. Yes, she has shields for allies, but she's still really tanky and she can shield herself if she takes unexpected poke damage. Number three solo laner, Malf. Four, Chromie, because she can stay far away. And five is Sylvanas. Why do people always let Sylvanas do the solo lane? Because she's a specialist. You know what? Both Zarya and Sylvanas are designed to be in tri lanes and to actually do real and lasting significant fortification damage. Not to stand there and soak a lane. Her trait disables buildings. Who's going to make use of that if it's a one versus one? So let's just go back again about what our guy, Zarya, could be doing here. Recognize immediately that there is a lane unattended and just go there. While you do that, do two pings of retreat on the mid lane or danger. You don't have to write it out, but if you're going top suddenly and they're used to having a picnic four people mid, go top by yourself and say danger Anna, just so they know that you're leaving. There is no reason to let Savannah solo. There's no reason to leave lanes unattended. And by doing consistent, effective habits, you will raise your rank. Oh, okay. You're soloing a Rhaegar here, and you're doing some decent damage, but we just saw Li Ming disappear from the map here. Now let's just take a sneak peek where she is. She's hiding, but you don't know that. All that you know is that you're 1v1 versus Rhaegar, and you're starting to deep push the lane. Okay, fine. What do you do after? You could get ganked. There's three people missing. For all you know, they could be coming right for you, and you're probably gonna die. You see Rhaegar sneaking up on you, starting to hit you. He puts a slow totem. If Li Ming and Diablo came now, you're dead. But you finally see them on the minimap. Just because you didn't die doesn't mean you weren't wrong. Anyway, you need to ask yourself here. Are you stopping Rhaegar from capping or are you capping? Just use logic. First of all, you will never cap this against Rhaegar. But he'll never cap it against you. So your focus should be just to be in range with your Q. And just soak the lane, push it, and make him miss XP. Uh, but because he's being over aggressive, you're doing a good job attacking him, I suppose. He took a bit too much damage, though. You could just be at big range and Q him cons constantly. If you stand here and you push the lane with auto attack and you Q him to not cap the altar, you will push the lane to the gate, he'll be forced to go here or miss XP. No matter what, you'll never give it to him, so you could have done this better. Now you've taken too much damage and it becomes harder and harder for you. Your injuries are severe. Heal now. Uh, a lot of things happen in the top of the map, but you kind of got to shrug off the fact that your teammates are dying, yes or no. You never have full control over that. Uh, when you don't have mana, do not spend all your grenades. There is no purpose. Uh, it doesn't do any damage. Unless you're looking to dismount people. When you have full energy, definitely. And that could have been a kill. Now, Chromie is going to poke this forever, so it's perfectly fine to have defensive position like you do here. Oh, nice. Crap. I don't know why it doesn't show HP, by the way. Hmm. Okay. Uh, now I'd like you to employ once again minimap awareness training. So uh, anytime he's saying he can do it alone. Anytime people are missing, pretend that they're all coming for you. If you do it that way all the time, that kind of paranoia, you will never get ganked again. Also, if you're doing simple things like attacking minions, you're not really having to focus on it, do you? You could just look at the minimap. So looking at the minimap now, we see our Lunara bot, Rhaegar top. Three people missing, that means they could be here. That means this is fine, but if you overstep, it's not fine. Okay, we now see two bots, one mid. There could be two on you. Two is fine. Now, you're uh, hitting minions, but you should also look at the map. While you're here, look at the map. And I think you did, and that's why you're going down to help, which is good. But now that you arrive here, you need to ask yourself, is this saveable? And I think the answer is probably yes. You're doing the right thing, and your teammates should also be coming. They're literally standing here with full life and mana. Doing what? Moonfiring Varian? Are you gonna kill him? 
Very good job by you. Good map awareness. Nice job. Very nice. Garatanas, please. Why did you even queue? What was that? Anyway, really nice. Good map awareness. Uh, at this point, move back. You don't have kill potential. You do not deserve to have this wave anymore. Okay, at this point, right now, you need to take one step to the right. She will miss her skill shots. Oh, it was fine. Well done. Right. Uh, stay close to the most um, silly people on your team so you can shield them and don't shield too early. At this point, it's actually okay to shield Chromie because she's got guaranteed poison damage. You'll remove that. Your shield will function to 100% of its effectiveness and you'll get energy. Oh, nice. Okay, at this point, you got expulsion zone, I suppose. Oh. Hmm, I guess it's not too bad considering you've got Twilight Dream and Chromie and Wailing Arrow. I just think Expulsion is better because it adds damage. You've got Double Warrior, a Specialist. You need to start becoming a ranged assassin here. So I would really like you to get Expulsion Zone. Shorter cooldown, which means more effective in the randomness that is low level hero league and quick match. Um, it does actual damage, so you, you contribute with that. You can save your teammates. This is like, I imagine my team will perfectly follow up. I understand why you did it. It's like, oh, you know, Chromie's going to get a lot of damage. But she's got her own setup with Temporal Loop. And you knew that because she got her ult at 8. If you do Expulsion, this zone is blocked. This zone is blocked. It's amazing. Okay, you're still uh, zoning in on Diablo, but he actually helped you kill Ming. <laughs> okay, Temporal Loop. Excellent. So at this point, if you want to be effective in Hero League... The most important thing is after you kill uh, a certain amount of enemy heroes, make a decision. It doesn't matter what it is. Make a decision and do something. In this particular case, you're four people with support, double warrior with a supportive warrior, and you see Rhaegar's top. Two of them are dead. Ping the fort. Kill it. Are Lunara and Varian going to stop you? No, most likely you get follow-up kills. The... Uh, emphasis on safe lane soaking oh there's minions in the wave while you're four versus two a level ahead and a talent ahead and a heroic ahead is uh, the kind of play that's like too safe which actually makes it unsafe because you allow them to come back you guys absolutely should have killed this fort and if you think you have the judgment and the speed to make a decision like that do it just ping it if you think the situation changes start spamming retreat or danger ping this is just too safe. It allows them to come back. And whatever advantage you have is going to evaporate in the passage of time. It's just like gentlemanly played by you guys, which is just bad. Yes. Rhaegar dies by coincidence. You didn't take a camp. You didn't get boss. You didn't get a fort. And you absolutely could have and should have. And trust me, uh, in fact, it's really hard for people to abandon calls once you make them. Never ping the boss if you don't mean it. People are going to do it, even if the whole enemy team is there. Same thing with Fort. If you ping it, generally people will come if you start. And if they don't, have the map, minimap awareness to uh, disengage. Okay, if I'm Zarya here, I would I would just go to Sylvanas. The chances that she dies against what you see on the map are decent. I would position myself in the middle of the map. Just walk away. This minion wave, it'll soak itself. You can just let it come to the gate. You don't need to be there and double man kill it. This camp, he's going to be fine. He's a healer, he's a warrior, but Sylvanas is doing this solo action. So I would make sure I'm fairly close so that if she gets caught, you're there. Just walk here, mount up, go top, say on the way, and then say danger. And here, retreat. Just like that. So let's see what actually happens with uh, Sylvanas. Get in there. Um, Artanis feeds one versus many. In fact, the entire enemy team is here, isn't it? Yeah. The entire enemy team is here. You waste a 100 second cooldown heroic, whereas Expulsion Zone, it lands quicker, it's safer for yourself. That's really nice, though. You said you took it for Chromie, it's really nice. But again, the execution is more difficult. 
and your staying here actually made your team feel, oh, 4v5 is not that bad. You need to constantly just count the odds. No, mind control. Let's push Diablo into Chromie. <laughs> oh, man. Everyone going for a different target. Wonderful. What are you doing, Mel? No, Artemis, what are you doing, dude? Why would you flip Diablo into your backline? What a clown fiesta. Now, see, your heroic is still off cooldown, but if you had expulsion zone, you could have saved Sylvanas with an expulsion zone. It's, it's, it has way more utility than, than grab. This is a pro gaming ult. Expulsion zone is a solo queue ult. Honestly, just try it. Okay, back to Zarya. Uh, again, you have this habit, okay? Everyone's got habits, and that's good. If you had no habits, you would forget how to turn the key in the lock. How to put your shoes on. You would need to think about everything. It would be very tiring. Habits in games are a good thing if they're good habits. If they're bad, you need to first become aware that they're a habit, and then unwork them to make them more effective. Your habit, as well as 99% of the heroes of the storm population, is... I see minion, I go kill minion, but you need to know why you're doing it. Why do you want their minion wave to die before yours? Just think about that for a second. What is it going to do? Do you need to use abilities on minion waves at the risk of dying? Do you need that XP five seconds earlier? So let's actually say exactly what happens when you kill the minion wave faster. Here's the advantages. You kill the minion wave, you get the XP faster. Greetings, friend. It may make you level up. Nice to see you again. Can't watch often recently frown. Thank you, Kyle Nova. Uh, you get your XP faster, which may give you a talent tier advantage. Second, you get more vision of the lane than they do. Because your minions are alive, theirs do not. What does vision do? Vision can give you the information required to pull back from scary situations or to set up scary situations for them. Now, if your team is not in a position to gank, either because your team is not that kind of orc or because your team is spread out over the map, that vision is purely defensive. But in doing so, in killing the wave, you're doing something undefensive. So the vision is situationally useful. Thirdly, Depleting ammunition. Fourthly, doing structural damage on towers and walls. So the question is, if I kill the wave fast, am I going to be able to ride that surfing wave and actually get structural damage? Or is it going to get cleared up immediately by the defenders? If it's the second option, I, you kill the wave, but it will just get cleared up, then it doesn't really matter who killed the wave first because they're going to clear it. The same thing with fighting over uh, mercenary camps. If you take the merc camp and you think in the next 30 seconds it will walk into the fort and blow it up, great. But if you're going to contest the merc camp and you'll either lose it, walk back, they cap it, you kill it here, no problem. Or you win it, you walk back, they kill it. No problem, but no gain either. So the actual fighting over the merc camp is just a tool to get good or bad positioning. So all those fights over camps, if the entire team is in attendance, your team, their team, is only a function to get better positioning. So it's not about getting the camp. The camp will get killed by one team and, killed, and then killed by the other. It doesn't matter. Occasionally, being the second team that kills the merc camp can give you an advantage. Uh, sorry, can give you a disadvantage. Great analysis. Please keep doing this. D, oh. thank you. No problem. Uh, occasionally being the second team that kills the merc camp after they capture it is a disadvantage because you need to stay there for 20 seconds longer and they will use that time to rotate up, get the boss, get an objective, whatever. But for the most part, it really doesn't matter. Here, for instance, Artanis. He has one team on the, uh, one member on his team dead. Sylvanas is top and they know it. Chromie just revived. Malf is defending against two. So they know, with Zarya dead, that Artanis is alone. Lunara finds him and there's two people here. Everyone is alive. Diablo and Ming are missing. 
which means Artanis gets found. He needs to ask himself, do I have kill pressure on Lunara? Maybe if she stays and face tanks everything, yeah. But there's the inherent threat of two people coming for him. Now, how likely is that? Well, she found him. She could be madly pinging her team now. Let's lo look at how the minimap looks like for the team. Hmm. They see Melf here. They will see Silver in a second, and they saw her before. Diablo is here, and he's coming over. And uh, Ming actually has a choice, and she's actually decided to go bottom. So I didn't know that Ming and Diablo are here, but I knew there's an option. Furthermore, what we know is we've got Vision here, and they're not defending it. Also, the objective is bot and mid, which means like flies to a corpse. Heroes will be drawn to the mid and bot. So the likelihood that Artanis is going to get ganked is very high. So the question is, even if he gets the camp miraculously, is it worth it? The sappers are going to push bottom, which is the most defended lane once his objective comes up. So the correct move for him is to pull back right now, but will he? No, people don't like giving up camps. Now he took a little bit more damage from Li Ming, and he will survive. But he could have died, especially if Diablo came as well. And he was nearly there, so it was... He's lucky, not good. Okay. So, Savannah solo pushes. This is fine. If she gets that fort, which she could have gone for, that could be fine. But that means that the four of you need to concentrate on a single altar. And be aware that you're not all together. Now, she's actually going right back in. You need to recognize this. This one is gone. So, focus your efforts on the bottom. Ask Malf to walk safely. Ping danger here. Go around and start poking here with Chromie. Now, it is risky, though. Romy is very out of position, doesn't have ice block, and honestly, both had to be given up. Now, even if you don't like giving it up, because Zarya wasn't back, Malf didn't want to rotate, and it's just Artanis with low HP that was retarded. Why would you do that? Anyway, uh, because um, the situation is as is, you need to make the difficult shot. Now, you, uh, Mr. Replay Submitter, Knala, you were dead. The best thing you can do while you're dead is to call out all of your allies' mistakes and make them feel bad and distract them from playing the game. Just kidding. The best thing you can do when you're dead is to survey the situation and not type because you'll distract them, but just do one, two pings just to do what you think is the best. So for example, you see the situation, right? You see Sylvia's top and she's hesitating whether she'll rotate bottom. And you see that Malf is having hesitation to rotate mid because he thinks it's scary and he doesn't like the long route for whatever reason. And you see that Artanis and Chromie feel inclined to poke this away even though they just captured this with two and there's three here. So they're going to die if they go. Just do double danger ping and say, give it. They may not like it. They may even blame you for, oh, we're never going to the objectives. But it is the best advice. You've done what you can. If they don't listen, that's on them. But you gave the correct advice. You don't... Oh my god, Miss Twilight. You don't like giving up the two altars, but it's the right thing to do. And you know what? Maybe later you'll you'll earn it back. Because you have this tower, you get some sappers, maybe you get a kill. But at least you don't die. You keep your experience lead. And then you'll get back some tower shots later. Okay. Five man invasion. Lovely. And you see three people here. So go super ham. As Zarya here, I would start walking forward immediately. You know that your team has enough damage, you know that they have enough CC. I would immediately mount up, go here, and start getting ready for body blocks on whomever, or try to get Lunara. At this point, you want to min-max. There's absolutely zero risk that any of you will die. Don't hone in on this camp. Mount up and try to get the most you can out of this. You're attacking Diablo, which uh, is not the best min-maxing. Now, uh, tunnel opens, there's nothing up. You're up at talent. You see three people top. Three to two. And you just killed Diablo. You know at this point. Everyone is going to walk around. Like a chicken. Looking for a few grains. Seeds or worms. Left and right. It doesn't make sense. You've got so much advantage here. Be the one. That forces your team. To go somewhere. Look. Everyone is spreading out. What are you doing? Lane soak. You're already up at talent. They need to worry about lane soak. You should attack. So the first thing you should do is. Pum pum pum. Ping. Kill the fort. Never stop. You're literally going in five different directions. Never. Now, no one is saying anything, which is fine. It's chill, it's fun, right? But you want to win. You want to rank up. So you got the forward, but you could have pinged it, right? Okay. Next thing you want to do 
is probably kill Midfort, to be honest. They're working on this one. And just start killing mid together. So just say ping, ping, ping. At this moment, I feel like this is okay. This is okay. But now you should attack mid. Or you can even defend bottom. Look, Diablo super exposed. Artanas calls it. It's actually a pretty good call. Malf always soloing. The what are you doing, Malf? What are you doing? Anyway, you're gonna destroy down here. Wow, oh, nice. Chromie carry. Alright, still a 3 for 2. Malf killed the tower with Entangle. Okay, so at this point, this is a good spread. You stay in the right situation. You get two of the tower shots, it's all good. Okay. At this point, at this point, you need to start grouping together. I would just pull back from here, soak the top, get the top camp, and ping to that effect as well. Ready for action. Very good. You're going with Sylvanas here. I like it. Okay. Uh, yeah. I was afraid of that. I was just gonna say you should danger ping here. Chromie mm. is landing some nice shots. Very nice uh, reaction speed with your shield. Expulsion zone once again far better than gravitation surge would have been. Okay, now they will get the boss and you need to recognize that. Don't fight over it. Don't get the sappers. Artanis capped this. He said he wants the sappers. Bad idea, bro. Okay, it's spiraling out of control. And I think it all happened because um, you didn't give the team direction. Um, you guys were 5v5. Savannah's went here, you went with her, which is fine. But you should just say, stay as 5. From level 18 onwards, stay as 5. Just say it. If, if there's one soloer, like Silver Mouth, just follow them like a dog um, follows a human who has a sausage in his hand, who also happens to be his owner. Now it's spiraling out of your control. I can only imagine it leads to your loss. Overall, not a bad game by you and by the team. Um, what did you take for the rest? Cleansing Shield, Unstoppable Competitor. Yeah, not a bad idea. I like it. Try to dissuade yourself from doing things like this, which have a very low success rate. Like 1 versus 5 defense. Just play it chill. Sometimes doing nothing is doing it best of all. Said Ronan Keating. Down a solo feed again. Feels pretty bad. <laughs> Hello, Mel. I am killed. Pretty nice fighting with you. You're uh, you're not a bad Zarya, but in the end, it was too much. You guys lost it at the five-man uh, gank at the boss. Uh, your skill level does matter for ranking, as long as you remember that your skill level is not just mechanics, but it's also getting your ragtag band of allies together and doing things. I think one of the most valuable things you can do is never chat, do some good things, but also, if you are ahead in talents and in hero count, give the team some direction. It doesn't matter if you ping boss. Say stay as 5, kill for it, or anything, gank this guy, whatever. But like the uh, gentlemanly grouping up and just laning when your talent's ahead, I think is one of the most damaging things to maintaining your, la your lead. Could you upload this on YouTube? It's really uber helpful. Yeah, sure, no problem. I see a lot of people that liked it. I'm glad to hear it. I don't think my analysis is uh, the best in the world, but... I try to do what I can. Should apply it more to myself sometimes, maybe. I'm glad you guys liked it. I know some people prefer just the, uh, you know, the standard gameplay, but it's nice to do some variation. It seems you have lost a key. 
I should have just let Falstaff die, man. Your core is under attack. From the depths I come. What the hell just happened to me? I was not burrow charged during the temporal loop. I thought I was gonna have a five man impale and suddenly I was higher than I thought I'll be. <gasps> My god, they're low.